Today I'm going to make a tier list. This isn't going to be a PvP or PvE tier list. This is going to be a tier list based on looks. A swag fiend tier list if you will. The categories that we'll be using will be Icon, Portrait or the full art, their story, their pose and how their outfit was transferred in game. And finally, they're hyperactive. I will separate these into, I believe, nine different tiers, going from E rank to star rank. LK's story, whilst him as a character overall was mediocre, his story or character arc was actually completed with his job. He finally gave up on trying to catch up to Elysis, and that is actually a lot to be desired. Portrait wise, he has this like condescending feel to him. It shows his authority in it too. It shows how much he's matured. But his hair! What is happening? What happened to the nigga? What is actually wrong with this man? Oh, his outfit as a whole has him with this huge billowing cape. But when you see that shit in game, it's like it's made out of paper. I don't know what they were thinking about doing this. Pose wise, I don't even know what this nigga's trying to fucking do. Is he trying to charge a Kamehameha or is he about to hit me with the biggest getting attention of 2018? You tell me. LK's hyper is really mediocre. Bar the pose that he does at the end, it really doesn't have much going for it. And because of everything that I've listed before, including the HA, I would have to put Night Emperor in C rank. Aisha's story does not develop a character arc in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't touch on anything related to the Ring of Mima. Moving on to her portrait, her portrait or her little icon, it's really easy for, for you to understand or see that it's EM because she literally just looks like EM with longer hair. In regards to her full art or her splash if I, if I will call it that, she looks pretty cool. She's managing to use multiple elements but that's like, it looks like it's been done, like it's been done pretty much. She's been doing that since her HA so that's not that cool. Her pose is extremely basic in game, but her in game outfit really, really does justice to the splash art. It really looks like it. So she gets bonus points for that. Her HA was underwhelming to me, which is why she is where she is. Animals as a character did not grow at all. Her story did not change, she's doing the same shit she has always been doing. Portrait wise, she actually looks really fucking nice. I really like the added detail they added onto the shoes, adding the cleats there shows or supports the whole leg stuff, martial arts she goes with. Uh, her bow has no sort of function. I really don't know what her bow is supposed to be in. I guess it's moving away from the whole archery kind of theme. Fair enough. In game, she looks garbonian. She looks like trash. I actually don't know what they were thinking. She in game looks so skimpy, it's unreal. She looks like she's wearing a mix of a tutu and a G string. She shows so much leg, it's actually so unnecessary. Her whole promo looks like a downgrade of the previous Wind Speaker version. Hyper wise, her hyper looks, it looks the same as everything else we've seen before and because of that, I feel like Animos is in D rank. My nigga BM or Furious Blade is actually the epitome of a swag fiend. His story, it wasn't, it wasn't that good. It, it could be better. His fucking hair? Tragic. His shoes? Tragic. His fucking pose? Tragic. Although, the outfit itself looks kinda good in game. His portrait, his full art, looks amazing. Typical of BM. His hyperactive? Look at the look at the amount of finesse my nigga has. His icon in game is very unique too. With the negatives he had, I will put him in S rank. Cold Ultimate is actually on some Disney shit. She literally hit us with the power was in me all along. Icon wise, 
it's really good because it differentiates her more from the other Eves, which was the issue before. Art-wise, she's amazing. She's actually broken art-wise. She looks so fucking cool, in my opinion. In-game, it transfers kind of well, but her pose is very generic. Hyper? The Hyper just looks like a 300 MP. Like, it really is Garbonian, and that's why I would say she's about average in the tier list. Comet Crusader is fucking garbage. He's literally IP with a cape and long hair. For some reason, they thought it was good to play up the whole Iron Princess thing for some reason. Even his icon. Trash. You see his fucking... See his fucking portrait? Look at that shit, okay. Look at, look at that. Hey, hey, look, look at that shit, okay. Literally IP's promo. Literally. Probably still wearing heels. Yep, he's still wearing heels. His fucking berserk? Long hair. Cause why the fuck not, right? His fucking hyperactive is literally Doomstrike. But worse. And his in-game literally looks the same as IP's. And so... Fucking E-Rank. Absara, whilst Regal, her story doesn't make any sort of sense. She somehow managed to unlock Ultra Instinct and became a sort of martial arts master. But explain to me, right, about why a martial artist wears high heels in combat. They also nerfed a very important part to me. They got rid of her fucking leggings. For some fucking reason, she lost the most important thing about SD. On top of that, her in-game doesn't look that good. It's mediocre. It looks like every other Ara IB. Then her hyperactive. Oof, oof, her hyper bruh, she's she's full Dragon Ball. First she goes Ultra Instinct, then she summons fucking Shenron. Fucking slings that shit around, sends Shen Shenron to fucking eat your ass or some shit. I don't know. Overall, she's mediocre though, so I'll put her in A rank. Just her presence alone makes the enemies tremble in fear. That alone should tell you how much of a swag queen Empire is to play. If that isn't enough, her icon. That's the face you make when your friend says some dumb shit. Like Konosuba is a good anime. Liking traps doesn't make you gay. Or Rose is canon and should be included in the game. That's the kind of face she's making. Portrait wise, she looks very cool. She slimmed her sword down. Which is a huge plus for me because it was actually fucking outrageous. Her whole outfit as a whole has nice references to GRM. Keeps it regal without like being over the top. Her hyperactive is literally Excalibur. And in game it translates well whilst also her pose shows how dominating she is or dominant she is. So I think Empire Sword is going to have to get the current highest tearing tear rank with SSS rank. I merely destroy with absolute power. Doombringer, in comparison to the other ads, is a meathead. His icon in game looks really nice, has a nice smirk on it. His portrait, or his full art, really really cool. The tattoos, the jacket, it just works so fucking well. Then, in game, it also translates very well. I also like how his idol pose has an homage to LP. His hyper is like a big fucking Rasengan. Then it like you fucking summon a Chidori or some shit and you fucking like stab through the Rasengan with a Chidori. And with it all together, Doomringer is SSS. CL finally fulfills his contract and in doing so becomes a demon. His icon, in my opinion, isn't that good. Moving on to his portrait or his flash art, there is now a huge emphasis on his throwing knives. The throwing knives were previously used in Dreadlord, but they were never used but bar one command. Uh, his pose is literally the same as another pose that TL uses. Moving on to Lou. Lou's story in this job didn't actually change. Her icon is actually amazing. Moving on to her portrait, her outfit is really nice. Her expression is really nice. All the small things, the wings that she has too, the design on them, really nice. Her pose is nice, but it also reminds you of another pose that Lucy already has. Their HA, and remind you, for another demon summon for a skill, it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to put CL in C tier, and I'm going to put Lu in SS tier. You know, researching for this video actually made me a little bit upset. I got to this point and I read Stormtrooper's lore. 
and I was so fucking disappointed. Why is Stormtrooper actually a fucking meathead? I'm going past the portrait now, I don't fucking care. All of her fucking achievements and all of her jobs, it, it, they literally didn't do anything. How did we fucking go through all this fucking class changes, right? Downgrade from Stormtrooper's promo with the fucking leggings and armor pieces, which is fitting for the heavy armor, to a fucking bra, to a fucking bra and leggings, and then you can get the hyperactive, which is literally just a big laser rifle. And it's just like, what the fuck were they thinking? I know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking STR should be in garbage tab, but you know what? I'm just gonna put her in D tab. That's what she deserves. Finally, at Ayn. His only real flaws would be his mediocre story and potentially his in game. His in game actually isn't that bad. The real issue is that his hair does not match the uh, portrait at all. It's very pale blue. Whilst in the portrait, it's like an a uh, aqua colour. And finally, his hyperactive. His hyper has so much grace and finesse to it, I just... I have to give it top marks. And with everything in mind, I would put Rikata in Esther next to Furious Blade. And that is everyone in the first part. And that wraps it up. Uh, like... If you like this shit, want to see more of it, see part 2, part 3, dislike if you don't. If you disagree with any of the placements that I put on the list, then say so. Say in the comments, I read everything. And bye. <laughs> Sukoshi